another day, another real world test. Today we're doing it on the Google Pixel 7 and I am traveling again. I'm in Seoul, Korea. I was actually brought here by Samsung. They were kind of showing us around, but that part of the trip is over. Now I'm on my own for a few days. So as is the usual, let's explore a bit while we test out this phone. But first things first. Coffee, check, and welcome to Kenya Kiambu Coffee. This is the closest coffee shop to my hotel in the neighborhood of Itaewon, and it is a jumble of random chairs and items, and so many awards and certifications all about coffee. Whoever owns this place is very serious about their coffee, and I obviously love that. It also happens to have one of the best views of a coffee shop I've ever been in. Now, something I've noticed about coffee shops here, by the way, is that most of them use buzzers, as if you're waiting for a table at a corporate restaurant. Also, croffles are a thing here. They're croissant waffles, and they feel like they've probably come from the Cronut school of thought, but they're actually pretty good. Now, while we're here taking in the view, let's talk a bit about the design and the display of the Pixel 7. So firstly, the camera bar is a single piece of aluminum. Last year was glass, and now that also wraps into the side rails. Now, the Pixel 7s is matte, whereas the Pixel 7 Pro has a glossy one. We now have a new, much faster in-display fingerprint sensor that works well enough. And speaking of that display, the Pixel 7 has a flat 6.3 inch 1080p screen that is 0.1 inch smaller actually than the 6. And so the phone is a hair smaller because of that as well. Now comparing that to the Pixel 7 Pro, the Pro has a 6.7 inch 1440p 120 hertz screen that is more curved. Now it's less curved than the 6 Pro, but it's still curved compared to the 7. Now the Pixel 7 screen is a 90 hertz screen, whereas the 7 Pro is 120 20 hertz, but personally, outside of gaming at least, I can't tell a huge difference between 90 and 120, but I can from 60 to 90 and 120. Now for brightness, it gets almost as bright as the Pro model on paper by just 100 nits less for peak brightness, which is only in direct sunlight, by the way, but side by side, you can't really tell. They're both bright enough to be seen in the daylight, and that's all I care about. Now personally, I love the size and the feel of the Pixel 7 along with the flat edges and the colors that it comes in work well too with this lemongrass one kind of being my favorite. The hazel of the 7 Pro is like a more grown up feeling and I like that the best for the 7 Pro but since the 7 doesn't come in it then lemongrass obnoxious all the way. Speaking of that new design, if you want to protect it or even negate the camera bar if you're not into it, we should talk about today's sponsor real quick. Casetify. Casetify has cases for the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro powered by EcoShock, their impact absorption tech. Because of this, their cases have been drop tested over 109 times to provide up to 8.2 feet drop protection and four times that of the military standards. They also have a raised camera bezel for those that would prefer a flush design to the back of their Pixel 7 or 7 Pro. And they do all of this in a super thin case that's made from 65% recycled materials. So it's a case made from cases. Very meta. Now they also have prints and artist collabs as well as a custom builder you can use online to create your own case. If you wanna check out their cases, head to the link in the description below and thanks again to Casefy for sponsoring this video. I did not expect this much Christmas music in Korea. Koreans, big into Christmas. Who oh, no. Welcome to the Cheongyeonggung Palace. This palace was built in the mid 15th century by King Sejong for his retiring father, King Taejong. Both are some of the first monarchs of the Joseon Empire, which was the last dynastic kingdom in Korea before the Korean Empire was formed in about 1897 or so, and stood until Japan's annexation of Korea in 1910. Now this palace was eventually renovated and expanded and became a place to take care of the wives of preceding kings, and as such is much smaller and more compact than the other four palaces. 
Yes, there are five palaces in Seoul in total. And it's located to the east of the largest kind of main palace in Seoul called Gyeongbokgung, which Samsung actually brought us to. And it is just massive and pretty. You can wander it for a whole afternoon, but it's also very crowded compared to this arguably tiny palace that we're at. Now, while we're here though, in this picturesque setting, let's chat about the cameras on the Google Pixel 7. Now, first we have a 50 megapixel F 1.85 quad bind main sensor. It is the same as last year, and it has 1.25 micron sized pixels that become 2.5 micron sized ones when it's binned. The ultra wide camera is actually the same as last year as well with a 12 megapixel F 2.2, 114 degree field of view and 1.25 micron sized pixels. Now, interestingly enough, the Pixel 7 Pro actually has a new, similar, but slightly wider 125.8 degree field of view ultra wide camera, which I prefer as this sensor and it's 0.7 times change in view isn't quite wide enough for me to be that different from the main sensor with the slightly lesser quality that comes with it. And the 7 Pro also has autofocus on the ultra wide, which allows it to do macro mode and the Pixel 7 cannot. We also now have a two times option that is better than last year as it takes the center 12.5 megapixels of that 50 megapixel sensor and uses that for better quality zoom. And I can say it is better and it helps slightly with the lack of a proper telephoto on the Pixel 7 versus the Pixel 7 Pro. And speaking of that, the Pixel 7 Pro also has this, but then it also has a five times optical telephoto lens, which is one of the biggest things that I miss when I switch from the Pro to the 7, honestly. And that five times also helps with shots between two and five times, as well as allow you to zoom in past the five times much further than you can on the Pixel 7. Now on the other side, we have a 10.8 megapixel selfie camera with a 92.8 degree field of view, which is the same as the 7 Pro. Now it's up from eight megapixels on the six with a slightly slower aperture, a narrower field of view, but larger pixels at 1.22 microns instead of 1.12. Now that front facing camera also supports AI based face unlock in addition to the fingerprint sensor that we already have, but it doesn't work very well in dark settings. And in my opinion, the fingerprint is just faster now with that new sensor and it's more accurate. So I just, I just turn off face unlock. As for video, we now have 4K 60 on all of the cameras, including the selfie camera. The Pixel 6 Pro only did 4K 30 on the selfie camera and the Pixel 6 didn't have 4K at all on the selfie camera. We can also do 10-bit HDR and Google apparently partnered with various social networks in order to get that HDR to display properly on those networks. We also have cinematic blur. It is the live portrait mode for video, similar to cinematic mode on the iPhone. And lastly, we have active stabilization, which we've again had on pixels for a while, but it's like the action mode of the new iPhone 14, where it limits the resolution of the video, but it does do more stabilization in an electronic form to mimic that of like an action camera. So when you're running, it's still stable. <laughs> Come on. After a lot of waiting and standing in lines, first the line to get on the cable car to get up to this part of the mountain, and then the line to take the elevator up to the top here, because one of them is broken conveniently today. Yeah. Regardless, welcome to the Namsan Seoul Tower. Namsan is the name of the mountain that we're on, and the tower here was built in 1969 as Korea's first transmission tower for TV and radio. Very much like the Fernsehturm term we visited in Berlin in my Sony Xperia 5 video, I'll leave a link to that if you're curious to go check that out. Now it actually is still in use and broadcasts some Korean media outlets signals. But of course, as with any of these types of towers, we have an observation deck that you can take an elevator to for a small fee. Now again, this took way too long for me to do today, but I was told that that's not normal. If it was, I would say maybe skip this and don't do it. But if it's not, then it's probably worth a quick visit and the cable car 
that I took to get here is novel as well. Now, fun fact about the tower though, it changes color based on the air quality of Seoul. So blue is good, green is fair, yellow is bad, and red basically says for you to wear a mask outside or even refrain from outdoor activities. Now, while we're here though, let's chat about some of the software improvements of the Pixel 7. Now, firstly, we have a new Tensor chipset called the G2. It's a four nanometer process. Tensor one was five nanometers, so it's a bit faster and more power efficient. And the whole thing about it is that it's built for machine learning tasks. So Google claims a 60% faster at machine learning tasks with 20% better machine learning efficiency. Now because of it, Google says it enables two times faster night sight processing for one, and I have tested it, and I can definitely confirm that night sight is much faster. They also say it enables the photo unblur feature, which can detect blur in images and fix them in Google Photos. Photos. Now they're saying it's only on the 7 and the 7 Pro and that's because of Tensor G2, but you could see it kind of coming to Google Photos later on, maybe, because if we're honest, it doesn't need the Tensor chipset to work, so... There's that. There's also a new feature to transcribe voice notes, but only if you're using Google Messages and you don't want to listen to them. You can then tap it and it'll turn them into text for you instead, which actually is kind of handy. The Recorder app now has the ability to detect different voices and let you label them differently, which is bonkers and super useful. Google has also made enhancements to direct my call. So it can now show all of the options when you call into say your bank. It'll tell you press one for this is this and press two is this based on essentially other people having called in and the data that they've gathered from that. And lastly, Google introduced a clear calling feature which uses machine learning to eliminate background noise on phone calls from your end for the person that you're calling so you sound better. So much Christmas music. Just, there's more Christmas music in Korea than there is in the States, I swear. Okay, calling it a night. Can't go anywhere else because that tower took forever. <laughs> but yeah, here is my screen on time and my usage for the battery for today. I think I have a charger about 9 a.m. and it is at 10% here now at 9 p.m. Now again, as always, this is a real world test. I use the camera a ton and that drains the battery pretty quickly. So just keep that in mind, this is not a normal day. But here is another day where I use the phone at least a little more normally and uh, the usage for that so you have something to compare it to. And now it does have a 4355 milliamp battery compared to the actually slightly larger 4614 milliamp battery of last year's model and less than the 5000 milliamps of the 7 Pro. And with all of that considered, it, I don't know, feels kind of the same as it did last year, which I would just give a, a meh rating to. Like it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's just meh. But overall, I do like the Pixel 7. I like the Pixel 7 Pro as well. I think both these devices just feel like a nice refinement to the 6 series. Styling wise, I kind of like them a little bit better. They just feel a little bit more grown up in a lot of ways. And they still have awesome cameras as you expect and are getting more and more software features that Google keeps sending to all of the Pixel devices. And as I said in my Pixel 7 Pro video, which I'll leave a link to below if you're curious about that, the biggest thing here really is the fact that there's a $300 price difference between this phone and the Pixel 7 Pro. And honestly, in my opinion, the only thing I miss coming from the 7 Pro to this is that telephoto camera and the slightly wider ultra wide. But is that worth an extra $300? I don't know. At $599, this phone is probably the best Android phone you can get for that price, hands down. So you just need to decide if you think the $300 is worth those things I just mentioned and some of the other features to step up to the 7 Pro or just stick with this one. You guys let me know, though, what you think in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. There you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, check out the rest of the Real World Test series and explore some more places with me. Also, subscribe and ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos if you're not already. And well, I ran out of time because of that tower, and I need to go get some food before the restaurants here in the hotel close. So, good night, guys.